clearance, or clearance rate of a substance, is defined as the volume of plasma needed to pass through the kidneys in a given amount of time in order to excrete a given quantity of that substance in the urine, and it's typically expressed in milliliters per minute. Now the following equation is routinely used to calculate the clearance rate of a substance, where CX, or clearance rate, expressed in milliliters per minute equals the urine concentration of substance X expressed in milligrams per milliliters times the urine flow rate which is expressed in milliliters per minute divided by the plasma concentration of substance X which is expressed in milligrams per milliliters. Now with this in mind, let's examine how filtration, reabsorption, and secretion affect clearance rates. For example, let's say the plasma concentration for substance X is 1.5 milligrams per milliliter and the urine concentration is 50 milligrams per milliliter and the urine flow rate is 1.2 milliliters per minute. If that substance is only filtered, not secreted, and not reabsorbed, then the clearance rate will be 40 milliliters per minute. On the other hand, what will the clearance rate be if substance X is freely filtered and about 50% of it is reabsorbed but not secreted? Now the plasma concentration and urine flow rate will be unchanged at 1.5 milligrams per milliliter and 1.2 milliliters per minute, respectively. However, the urine concentration will now be half or 25 milligrams per milliliter. With these new values, the clearance rate of substance X, which is filtered and reabsorbed but not secreted, will be 20 milliliters per minute. This represents a 50% decrease in clearance compared to a substance that is only filtered. What will the clearance rate of substance X be if it's freely filtered, not reabsorbed, but now substance X is secreted? Again, the plasma concentration and urine flow rate of substance X will be unchanged at 1.5 milligrams per milliliter and 1.2 milliliters per minute, respectively. However, because substance X is now secreted, the urine concentration will also be increased, in this case, to 75 milligrams per milliliter. With these new values, the clearance rate of substance X, which is freely filtered and secreted but not reabsorbed, will be 60 milliliters per minute. Now with this in mind, let's turn our attention to how we can use clearance rate to assess two very important renal functions, which are glomerular filtration rate and renal plasma flow. In order to use clearance rate to assess glomerular filtration rate, the molecule must be freely filtered, not reabsorbed, and not secreted. There are two such molecules that are typically used. They are inulin, a plant-based polysaccharide, and the endogenous molecule creatinine, which is a byproduct of the breakdown of creatine phosphate, primarily in skeletal muscles. Of the two molecules, inulin clearance is a more accurate measure of GFR. However, it's not practical for day-to-day -day clinical use because it must be administered intravenously. Thus, creatine clearance is more widely used. In fact, there are a number of algorithms that rely solely on serum creatinine to estimate GFR. We'll talk about those in another lesson. Now, in order to use clearance rate to assess renal plasma flow, the molecule must be completely cleared by the kidneys. In other words, it must be freely filtered and secreted, but not reabsorbed. Paraamino hypuric acid, or PAH, is routinely used to estimate renal plasma flow. Because PAH is not endogenous to humans, it must be administered intravenously. 20 to 30% of PAH is cleared through filtration, while the remaining 70 to 80% is completely secreted along the proximal tubule, primarily by the sodium-dependent phosphate transporter 1. Because PAH only estimates the renal plasma flow to the segments of the kidney that form urine, it underestimates total renal plasma flow by about 10% which is why renal plasma flow is approximately 92% of PAH clearance. 